So you know about those mockbusters like Little Panda Fighter or Ratatouille, right? I hope I'm not the first one to tell you about any of this. But imagine for a second that these companies made a response so direct that it could trace back to the exact imitator. That's what this is. Also plug in my Discord. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a show called Miracle Star. It was a Chinese show about the daily adventures of a goat and his adopted frog brother. Now I will admit, I was a little skeptical at first back then, and I wanted to make sure that it was a copy rather than us connecting the dots to something that was just incidental. But no, as a Gumball fan, some of these visuals on the screen should seem oddly familiar, and if you're not a Gumball fan, the comparison should make it seem like there's more than just a simple coincidence. Consider this an unofficial versus. I originally did not intend going in to fully compare both, but I figure in order to show you how great the copycat is, I would have to tell you about Miracle Star in detail. So in its usual fashion, the episode starts out swinging. Cowboy caviar? Yum, what is it? Uh, uh, eggs from cowboys? One thing about The Amazing World of Gumball is that it is undeniable the show goes out of its way to include a lot of jokes in each episode. Even in episodes like The Parents, which I covered a while back, episodes that are considered more serious in comparison, it still has a lot of jokes within it. To copy a show like this, I would imagine you would have to be really funny and make sure that your jokes hit one after the other. And they'd actually introduce the imitators quite early in the episode, giving as much of these 11 minutes as possible to react, ridicule, roast, and and respond to what we believe to be Miracle Star. Gumball reacts to what hot dogs are really made of, don't look it up, and a certain oddly similar duel comes around. Ew, look at this one, Ribbit. Mitts, fat, and connected tissue in a cellulose casing? Uh, -huh. uh, what is going on here? Uh, what is going on here? In the wild world of Gumball, things like this aren't as odd as they seem, which makes sense as to why they have a rather lukewarm reaction to this. This is the same world that forcefully erases boring characters and sends them to a place that is incredibly hard to even get into. In a sense, while unique as this is, it was made for shows like The Amazing World of Gumball. This is a show that throws in commentary and loves to exaggerate things to the highest degree. So to have a show miles and miles away imitate you to such a high degree, that's the equivalent of like if something revolving a panda comes out, it's like you're made to do this. As Gumball and Darwin tell their parents, Nicole and Richard are very skeptical at first until they notice the imitators don't stop at the children. <gasps> there they are! What the, what the? By the way, it is crucial to the episode that the reaction to these imitators should seem both reasonable and entertaining. If it was just reasonable but not entertaining, then it wouldn't warrant being made into a cartoon. But if it was entertaining but not reasonable, then it sacrifices that long-term shelf life due to the fact that it probably wouldn't age well as an over-the-top response. And if it's not entertaining or reasonable, then you have Teen Titans Go. Yes! Clowns are for kids! And some of you may think that's low-hanging fruit, but that's the only other Cartoon Network show in recent time that directly responds to things outside of its universe, within an episode at least. The reason why the copycats wasn't brandish as petty or boring or mean-spirited is because of this important thing. The show knew when to laugh at itself. This goat is attention of the center. He is serious, don't you trust him? A heavy party love hero with powerful personality defectives. <laughs> That makes no sense. Imagine a scenario in which two YouTubers exist within their own separate Discord servers <coughs> and both experience a tiny raid, nothing too bad about it, you know, like one, two, you know what, like five people, five person raid. And it's dealt with pretty quickly. You know, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't really affect anything long term. YouTuber A makes a tiny joke about it, you know, doing something like pretending to run a talent show and each of the raiders trying to be funny and getting booed out of the server. YouTuber B boots them immediately and then goes on a wild rant about being harassed and makes a video to post to their main channel about it. Now you may think that YouTuber A incentivizes more raiders to come due to their accepting attitude about it, but it's actually YouTuber B in most cases that causes the loop of more raids due to the fact that a lot of raids are rooted in getting that kind of reaction. And creating said video would just amplify something that a lot of people didn't even know about. You think people were speedrunning getting banned from Yandere Dev's Discord because of its chill and relaxing community? The Copycats is an episode laughing at this exchange, and they never come across 
across as angry, petty, or jaded about it in the way that Teen Titans Roar was 11 minutes of the show being jaded that it isn't a beloved reboot. And this isn't to say that, for example, if you get decked in the face or if someone actually is making a very harsh video about you or doing something that actually does harm and affect you, that you should make a joke out of it and laugh it off. A lot of times, jokes don't help. But in this case, the idea of having a foreign knockoff isn't the end of the world, nor does it hurt the brand of Gumball. At most, it's a joke that most people, at least in the western side of the world, know that this isn't really gonna change anything. Wowie, well, we, what a mother. Who cares if she's annoying? You? <laughs> <laughs> What's my doppelganger like? <laughs> Deleted. What? Why? <laughs> because women no right to celebrate in Republic of People. <laughs> <laughs> However, it is important to note that both here and in Miracle Star, there's no daughter. Now, I don't know if it's because of what this episode implies, the two-child policy, or because they didn't want to animate another person, but this is crucial because Anais plays the straight man or straight girl to the chaos that is about to ensue. However, before we are formally introduced to the imitations, let's introduce ourselves to the source of the imitation. The premise is simple. Fake Gumball and fake Darwin want to become big eaters, specifically after being told by their mother what a big eater is. And I'm also going off of a sub, not a dub, so if anything I say is inaccurate or if that's not exactly what they say, I'm only going off of how the sub translated the audio. And by the way, no, I'm not calling them by their names in this review, especially Miracle, because it'd be a miracle if I even get through this. Now that can be an interesting concept, not a one-to-one, -one, but there was an episode of Gumball, The Ghosts, in which Carrie would use Gumball's body to feel and enjoy the sensation of eating again, given that she's a ghost and she cannot feel that sensation anymore. However, here they're just inspired to do it just because kids. Of course, fake Nicole is against the idea of finding it bringing shame to their name. However, fake Richard just so happens to have tickets to a real life eating competition. Apparently within the world of Miracle Star, Microsoft Windows is canon. So that's where all of Bill Gates' donation money has been going. If you're a fan of Gumball, you probably have seen where the inspiration comes for in this scene everything from exactly how they use the computer to the color schemes of the room and everything else here just screams I watched Gumball and I don't have that much money to recreate it but I'm gonna try anyway. One positive thing I can say about Miracle Star is that it showed me how well the amazing world of Gumball blends in their animated parts to real life parts because here it's really obvious what's what and it just makes it all look tacky. They apparently just let the fake Gumball eat everything which if this family is depicted not to be rich. Fake Nicole is super lenient in this episode episode? I'm, I'm gonna go with the episode. And there's so much to say about this scene. For one, fake Darwin would be confused as to why fake Gumball is eating so much as if he wasn't in a room with him five minutes ago wanting to become a big eater. Two, the fake Coca-Cola has Miracle Star branding. And for an imitation, you're really succeeding in flying colors. You even do the cheap imitation route of not knowing what Gumball was about. The entire world wasn't branded around him. Elmore had its own city, its own life. And it's just that Gumball was brazen and he felt like he needed to include himself and affect as many people as we get to see. We go from attempting to copy the writing to attempting to copy the animation. Bonus points if you can guess where this scene took its lovely inspiration from. Okay, done. It was the wand. I can list a thousand things that make this better than Miracle Star, but I'd be stating the obvious. The sound direction, the sound effects, the animation in general, it's all self-explanatory. But this is fake Gumball's first step into becoming a big eater. We'll see what happens once we get back over to the copycats. Getting back over to the copycats, they emphasize two things, which makes them a pretty big problem in their world. One, they're rather public with their imitation, imitating things that happened practically years ago, or yesterday, we don't know a lot of the Gumball timeline, but also two, that their imitations are rather instant, and anything that happens at any time, and if it's interesting, it'll be uploaded. For example, when explaining how much dough it would take to hire a lawyer to sue, Richard realizes that it would be more dough than he can eat, which is saying something. <gasps> Wait a minute, how could they copy that? It literally just happened. All right, so I know that this is bad and all, but I kind of want the internet that they have. Like
like it can't just be me, right? They uploaded that in a minute or two. I don't even think Google Fiber is doing all of that. However, another really important thing here is that Gumball is not envious. Unlike a Tobias, Allen, or Leslie situation, where these people push his buttons to make him do things out of jealousy, envy, or to truly be the center of attention, here Gumball is just insulted by the mere just notion of these imitators, just seeing them as beneath the Watersons, without ever really saying it. This is how you respond, because if they actually did say, quote unquote, we're beneath you over and over, it would bring up the inevitable question of, then why did you spend months or years storyboarding and writing and animating and basically creating a response if they're beneath you? Obviously, they do care, but the key is, they don't seem hurt, and the characters are basically portrayed as anyone reasonably would respond to being copied. Hey, could you cut that out? Let's settle this in a civilized manner. Mm -mm. Hi, my name is Gumball. Hi, my name is Chief. Stop repeating everything I say! They get into an awesome fight, which revolves around them accentuating their personalities, traits, flaws, and all. And it really shows you how great these characters are. Imagine if you were to fight yourself. You probably think you have a solid grasp on how to do it, but wouldn't you, the other you, also know this? Now crank this up to 100, where they literally know what you're going to do as you do it, and you kind of run into an issue. It's quite clever, really. And it also brings up some philosophical questions that are way too deep for a channel like this. And in return, this boosts the need for Anais to be within this episode. Okay, fight Fighting clearly isn't working. Maybe we should help them find their own identities. Why should we help those bootleg butt clowns? In the end, isn't identity theft the most sincere form of flattery? It's in that sense that those like Darwin and Nicole can ease away from being the voices of reason given that they're currently occupied with dealing with an imposter. And while Anais is being the level-headed one in these situations trying to deal with things with reason, they sing a song about being your own, well, you. The idea that if you have your own thoughts and traits and actions and whatever, that you shouldn't copy someone else and develop your own unique identity. It's actually in the upper bound of songs that I like from this show. However, a catchy song isn't gonna stop these imitators as they quickly imitate this action and post this video online, leading Anais to have an idea. They copy literally everything. Let them copy you at their own risk. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something about Darwin screaming right at the end there that sends me. So they decide the best course of action is to dump more fire on this, living their lives as creatively dangerous as they can manifest, which is really at the core of what I like about Gumball. A lot of these options are really done at their own expense, except for the car driving, which look really cool. However, in addition to this episode not being so aggro on the copy, I think it's clever that they also let NAE shine, having her display her great intellect, but also social based insecurities, being triggered by the fact that she wasn't included in the imposter's family. Angered that they were able to easily imitate these dangerous actions, they decide to take it one step further than near fatal actions into fatal actions, if you couldn't guess. However, before we get to them, let's see what Miracle Star does that's so entertaining. So Miracle Star keeps the fun cranked to a nice 0.2 out of 10 with a bath scene. But not just any bath scene, a bath scene that leaves me with questions that I'm not sure I want answers to. First of all, fake Gumball and fake Darwin shower together. And I understand in story why because of the spit take, but then while in the bathroom their father wants in and I'm like, what? Apparently he wanted in to take the time to explain that because he overate before, he's gotten into the cycle of becoming too hungry to eat the amount that he normally would. and has to eat more to sustain the beast of hunger inside of him. Thus his secret that he wanted to tell them while they're in the bath is that he is the biggest eater, second to none, and wants to show the fake Gumball and fake Darwin that he hides food around the house to eat. <laughs> Besides that being more of an underwhelming moment than a funny moments with Kid Danger compilation, it's also just stupid. They're trying to tell you, the viewer, that big eating is dumb, but at the same time, their father just so happens to be the best person to do it, but the mom doesn't care enough to actively be on this, and that babies cry when he eats things, which isn't what babies normally do, and that apparently he's either banned or closed down multiple restaurants in this fake Elmore? Again, more questions than answers. And it's not even worth trying to figure it all out, but let's get to this fake 
Elmore Junior High, which just pause. So we have a fake Bobbert, a fake Masami, fake Juke, fake Hector, who's apparently standing within the lunchroom, must be a tall space, and probably some fake food that I can't really distinguish. It's crazy how they don't even try to hide it. And you know what? This is the rare time that I can put my money where my mouth is and say that I, or more accurately, my team and I, do better character design than this, but that's spoiling something in the near future. Apparently everyone is looking around for fake Gumball, stating that he always eats a lot during lunch, which begs the question of why fake Gumball Gumball didn't know what a big eater was, or why this is the first time that it comes up. So his grand plan is to starve himself, so that he becomes so hungry later that he eats way more than necessary. Their way of saying that this idea is going to take a toll on him is to show him watching food eat food, and not food eating what's on the picnic table. No, no, no. The ice cream kid is offering themselves to fake Leslie, the potted broccolo- Broccoli? Really? The potted broccoli. Because comedy? So in totally original fashion, Fake Darwin sleeps on a bunk bed with fake Gumball. I guess Ikea was just really killing it with this sale of this specific bed. Waking up fake Gumball causes him to go into a food-induced mental breakdown where I guess he takes inspiration from the ghost and becomes this possessed form, wanting to eat the frog as he says. However, getting into the kitchen, his food-possessed rampage quickly comes to an end. It wasn't anything to note, so... Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't know if this is the translation or this is actually what they meant, but technically it's the other way around. He starved, then pigged out. Unless you mean the beginning, then you're missing an extra pig out. Taking another page from the Gumball book, we have organs that operate under their own thoughts, feelings, and miniature body parts. There's a lot of episodes that deal with this, but I'd like to lean on the genius, as it seems like Miracle Star really enjoyed season one of Gumball. And I do too, I think it's pretty underrated, but I would never think to do this. In the genius, Gumball's brain had its own thoughts, feelings, and many body parts, but it was meaningful as Gumball wanted to become a smarter version of himself and had to literally work with his brain to achieve that. Here it just feels so out of place given that it just checks another box of what Gumball does, but not why they would have done it. However, because the fake Gumball's dumb stomach was told that they'd be a big eater and apparently they really love ice cream, they decided to work together. I'm so glad they got to talk it out. Yay! Anywho, before we get back to the battle, let's finish off the good show. Cleverly weaving through the choice words for death and with a neat but subtle transition, we're at the big action scene, where not only are they marked for death if they stop, but they are marked for death if they continue driving. However, after panicking for a little bit, they do try a few options, one of which is to stop the fire, which Gumball has done a lot of things, but putting out an oil fire would not have been one of them. His lungs are just not built for that. The other is jumping, which would stump physics given that they're still going as fast as a truck and somehow get launched back into the truck with their seatbelts on. But hey, what I like about this is that they never let you forget about their impending doom. We need to unhook the tank! How? The space between the truck and the tank is too tight. For you guys, maybe, but not for me. It is also necessary that Anais has this idea, and that none of the other characters simply give it to Anais to do, because she has to be in control for there to be no back door to copying this idea. That's why Richard, Darwin, and Gumball had ideas that didn't work that presumably the imitating family tried as well to unsuccessful results. The writing makes logical sense, and it's not that the plan was this genius way to get around it, it was the most obvious way to fix this, in fact. But so what? It's entertaining, it makes sense, that's all I really care for. Anything more is a plus, like getting this amazing cinematography of Nicole and Anais's intense pair of scenes where Anais attempts to unhook the truck, as Nicole tries to keep the truck as steady as possible. Good thing they attempted to do this now instead of when they had to swerve out of the way of the ramp, or else they would have been a two-child family as well. After managing to unhook this truck, which I'd imagine would be rather hard to do while driving, they now have to trust their tires, brakes, friction and whatever deity resides over Elmore to hope that they don't fall off of this highway and end the show prematurely. Uh, 
you guys good? My guess is no. They're imitating dead cartoons now. Just so that we're all on the same page here, the way that they fixed this issue with these guys was just to play an expensive game of chicken, which ended up with the loser becoming so disfigured that they can't imitate anything else. Now some may scoff at this ending calling it a little dark or over exaggerated, but I see this as the gumball team and thus Cartoon Network puffing out their patriotic chests and spreading their bald eagle's wings and saying, <laughs> And you know what? That is my energy at my core. Because guess what? Miracle Star couldn't lace up Darwin's shoes. Miracle Star couldn't handle this pressure. They're the imitator for a reason. They stick behind the leader, the innovator. That is Gumball. So after checking to see if there are any other Gumball ripoffs, they get zero results. Luckily, there aren't any content creators on Elmore Plus that made videos on Gumball ripoffs. We'd end on Gumball and Darwin making their next voice change as the previous voice actors were being phased out due to puberty. That'll teach them for trying to replace us. Yeah, as if anyone else could do what I do. Yeah, we're irreplaceable. <laughs> <laughs> so how does Miracle Star plan to stack up to that? So everything was building up to this. If you were sitting down, you might want to stand up for this shocking news. Fake Gumball eats at an eating competition and wins. Now do they show this eating competition? Not really. They show them winning. You see, complex actions and animations would cost this thing called money, and they don't have that. And it would also require this thing called creativity, which they don't have either. However, if I were to suspend being snarky for a second and be genuine, I have no connection to Miracle Star because there's nothing about him to like. He's just a reactionary, bland character that is the focal point, sure, but moves along to everyone else's drum. They actively go out of their way to not do anything interesting. Between fake Gumball's father being a big eater that never was built upon, or everyone at school being interested in fake Gumball, but that also not being built upon, or the fact that they look up what a big eater does and how they practice once, and then they just roll with it. What makes the copycats really good is that it is established who takes the lead and who supports the lead, with the lead being very interesting. Anais is generally a very snarky, laid-back, practical character, except when it comes to social interactions, and here she was amazing, calling the shots but also revealing her insecurities and playing along, and the rest of the family played support with funny jokes, a good song, and their reactions to the clear imposters. But here, the lead clearly is fake Gumball, but he sticks to the script word for word, does nothing interesting because being interesting requires effort, which requires time and money when it comes to animation, and that's why Miracle Star can't even carry Gumball's bags. Seeing how terrible and bland this is only accentuates why the copycats is so amazing. So through ending this, fake Gumball lets his stomach take over, eating an ice cream mountain and then I guess the people around him except for fake Darwin, and they just recreate the soda scene again, which I guess is to prevent his stomach from bursting. So just in the fashion of this bad writing, they awkwardly use a bookend, ending this terrible 12 minute waste of my life asking where to eat, and I refuse to dignify this anymore. The winner of this kind of versus is pretty much predictable. Of course the copycats is better than Miracle Star. I don't think a lot of people would disagree with that statement. And yes, I mean Miracle Star in general. And there's not much more to say except, well, is it one of the best episodes? I'd say so. I can't wait to rank it and see because this is one of those episodes that's not only written solidly, but also funny and it hits certain meta and dark niches. And overall it's just a prominent and significant episode in the show. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Alpha out.